I'm Dr. Orion Taraban, and this is Psychax Better Living Through Psychology. And the topic of today's short talk is limitations make you better. So this is a very important subject for all men to consider. When I say limitations, what I'm talking about here is a self-imposed, extrapolated ethical framework. It's self-imposed because you got to do it yourself. And it's extrapolated because you really got to think it through. And it's an ethical framework because it informs how you make decisions as you move through the world. Let me explain why this is going to be worth the trouble. For better or worse, the vast majority of men out there have not chosen to surrender to a specific philosophical or religious framework in a Catholic way. I don't mean Catholic like the Catholic Church. Catholic means whole. So a Catholic framework is one in which all the doctrine is preserved whole. You don't pick and choose which rules you're going to follow and which rules you're going to ignore. And it could very well be the case that certain traditions actually know more than you do. I mean, some of them have thousands of years of accumulated wisdom behind them. And when you place yourself above them by picking and choosing, then you will likely deprive yourself of at least a portion of that knowledge. In my opinion, it's better to completely surrender to a framework for as long as you can and then to leave the framework entirely when you can no longer do so for whatever reason. Now, without this ethical framework, people are more or less just making it up as they go along. And this means that every decision is functionally based on emotion and self-interest. They like it, so it's good. They don't like it, so it's bad. This is how infants navigate reality. However, many people have not matured past this stage because doing so takes effort and discipline and clarity. That said, the consequences of not doing this are considerable. Just look around. Modern life is a constantly shifting chaos of inconsistency. What is bad and wrong today might have been good and right just a year ago, which is an absolutely insane way of going through the world. It's crazy making. On the other hand, An extrapolated ethical framework is like a North Star. It's something by which we can navigate the ambiguities of everyday life. And if we're not going to surrender to an external framework in a Catholic manner, then in my opinion, we have the ethical duty to create that framework for ourselves. And it's all right if this framework is a chimera. You can take something from the Stoics and something from the Buddhists and something from the Christians and something from the existentialists and so on. However, eventually you're going to want to create a system that you'll be willing and able to surrender to wholeheartedly. And this will perforce require you to set limits on yourself. Limitations are necessary. They're like a skeleton, which not only protects, but facilitates locomotion as it allows us to move through the world with some degree of confidence and equanimity. People don't always like limits, but there's really no way around them. Now, there are two really important ways in which the limitations inherent in an ethical framework will help you out. First, this framework will help you not self-destruct once you become successful. In many cases, the limitations inherent in an ethical framework are less useful when you're not successful. This is because the reality of your circumstances already places limits on your action. There's kind of no need to use an ethical principle to restrict behavior if that behavior is already restricted by scarcity. It's one thing to moralize about infidelity when nobody wants you, for instance. It's quite another when hundreds of beautiful women are throwing themselves at you every day. However, it's important to consider how you would want to live if you could actually do whatever you wanted and to start practicing that way of life today. Why? Because we're going to start off by assuming that we're going to end up there one day. Like, start with the end in mind, right? So if we assume that one day we will have enough success and optionality to functionally do whatever we wanted, and if we don't start putting limitations on our actions now before we need them, then it's extremely unlikely that we will be able to rein in our behavior in the absence of the external restrictions to which we have effectively delegated our accountability. And this is a problem because our lives will likely go off the rails at that point, and we won't be able to enjoy the fruits of all our extensive efforts. Just look at the rock stars and the celebrities. What tends to happen to them 
when they arrive at the point where they can functionally do whatever they want. Self-destruct is not hyperbole. It's very easy to moralize about these people's behavior, but it's probably more useful to assume that these people are really no better or worse than you are. While they may have an extraordinary talent in some respects, they may be very normal in all other regards. So their lives are often a testament to what happens when ordinary people attain to extraordinary power and influence without an extrapolated ethical framework. Start practicing within those limitations today. Now, before I go any further, if you're liking what you're hearing, please consider sending this episode to someone who might benefit from its message because it's word of mouth referrals like this that really help to make the channel grow. I'm also proud to announce that I'll soon be publishing my book, The Value of Others. So if you'd like to learn more about that, then you can go to my website and sign up for my weekly newsletter. Finally, please fill out an inquiry form on my website if you're interested in booking a paid consultation. The link is in the description. All right, let's get back to it. Now, the second way in which the limitations inherent in an ethical framework are important is that limitations make you better. So this is the title of the episode, right? So how exactly does this work? The easiest way I found to explain how this works is to talk about Batman. So Batman is actually Bruce Wayne, the handsome, brooding billionaire. And this guy can pretty much do whatever he wants. He's jacked, he's rich, and he puts on a costume and flies around the city. He lives above the law, which is a conscious choice on his part to do, and which kind of puts him constantly at odds with the police, but that's how he's decided to live. Now, Batman's nemesis is Joker. And despite their differences in appearance, the two are actually fairly similar. Joker also puts on a costume and flies around the city and lives above the law as a conscious choice. And Joker pretty much uses every opportunity he can get to remind Batman of this fact. And this is dangerous for Batman because were he to cross a line, a line that really only exists because he drew it himself, and a line that no one could really hold him accountable for crossing anyway, his precarious relationship to self would crumble into chaos. So Batman has self-imposed rules that separate him from Joker. On one hand, Batman doesn't have to have these rules in the sense that no one is forcing them on him. But on the other hand, he does. Otherwise, the ethical basis for his action in the world would flounder into incoherence. Without these rules, he would be no different from Joker, or rather he would be worse than Joker, as he would be a self-righteous, deluded hypocrite. At least Joker doesn't have any illusions about himself. In any case, Batman has a few Batman rules, like he doesn't use guns and he doesn't kill people. Those are two of the rules that he has chosen to operate by, and he's going to hold himself accountable to those rules because they help keep him on this side of sanity. That said, these rules do create a liability for Batman. Why? Because due to these self-imposed rules, rules that Joker has not imposed on himself, it's now actually easier for Joker to win than it is for Batman to win. Batman now has fewer win conditions than Joker does. For example, for Batman to win, he needs to capture Joker without killing him. However, for Joker to win, he could not only capture Batman without killing him, he could just kill him. Or even more perversely, provoke Batman into killing him, which paradoxically would allow Joker the ultimate moral victory over Batman. So there are more ways for Joker to win, which all other things being equal increases the likelihood that he will win. This means that if Batman and Joker were exactly the same skill and power level, Joker would win. Batman wouldn't have a chance. If the two were evenly matched, the victory would go to the one who could win more easily. Batman understands this, however, and Batman's understanding of the liabilities created by his self-imposed limitations force him to become more skilled and more powerful than he otherwise would be. This is because the only chance Batman has of successfully competing with Joker under these conditions is to become significantly better than his enemy. He must be stronger and smarter and tougher to overcome his handicap. And the kicker is that he probably wouldn't have become better unless he needed to. 
And it was precisely his self-imposed limitations that created the necessity for him to improve. So I encourage all you men out there to define your Batman rules. What are the limitations that you are going to choose to apply to your own lives? Not because you need to, not because you will be punished if you don't, but because you understand that applying these limitations will force you to become better than you currently are. Hopefully that makes sense. What do you think? Does this fit with your own experience? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear about some of your Batman rules. As always, I appreciate your support and thank you for listening. And now, a word about Stellar. If you're interested in pursuing a master's degree or a doctorate, chances are good that you'll have to take the GRE. Now, before I became a psychologist, I was actually one of the world's top GRE test prep instructors. Over 20 years, I developed a unique and practical system for dismantling every aspect of this test, and I helped thousands of students achieve top percentile scores on the exam. Today, students can learn the same system I use to achieve my own perfect score with Stellar GRE, my online GRE self-study program. I personally wrote and designed every aspect of this course. Among other things, it includes a 500-page test prep manual, thousands of practice problems, and several full-length mock exams. Just like my episodes, Stellar is designed to give students the strategies and techniques they need to succeed as clearly and succinctly as possible. And the best part is, Stellar works. My students' average score improvements are higher than my competitors' score guarantees. So create an account and start your free trial today at StellarGRE.com. Use the code PSYCH for 10% off any membership plan. The link is in the description.